Hi guys, this is Sadef from Webroom.com and in this video, we'll show you how to flash the latest Linux OS ROM based on Android 15 onto your Poco F5. This is the new official build. So let's get started. Before that, please make sure that you are on the latest Android 15 Hyper OS 2 build. If that is not the case, then you must install it from the Mi Flash tool and get hold of the ROM file from here. This is the Fireboot ROM. And from this link, you will download the link for your phone, for your region as well. In my case, I'm on the India region. So this is the link. And from there, download the Fireboot ROM, extract the Fireboot ROM and flash the ROM via the Mi Flash tool. I've just done that as well. As you could see, I'm on the Android 15 Hyper OS 2 build. So once that is done, only then move on with the next step of the ROM flashing. So I am already on the Android 15 build. So let's now get started with the ROM flashing process. So first off, download the Android SDK platform tool from my guide and start them onto your PC. You may start them anywhere you want. In my case, I have done some C drive. As you could see, these are the five platform tools. Once you've done the extraction, also add this to the path of environmental variables. So search for environmental variables over here. Open it. Hit the environmental variables button. Then to go to the system variables, choose the path, click on edit, click on new and now add your platform tools path over here. As you can see, this is the path of my platform tools. Once that is done, click on OK. OK and once again OK. So let's move on with the next step. Now you have to enable USB debugging and OEM unlocking. The debugging is required for ADB command, whereas OEM unlocking is required to unlock the bootloader on your phone. So let's enable both the toggles. Go to the settings menu on your phone. From there, go to about phone and type on OS version 7 times. This will enable the developer options. Go back, go to additional settings developer options from here and enable the toggle next to OEM unlocking and USB debugging. Once that is done, you might get a prompt, check mark I am aware of all the risk and then wait for 10 seconds. Once that is done, type on OK and the debugging will now be turned on on your phone. Again, you might get one more prompt, again type on OK and let's now verify the debugging connection. So go to the address bar of platform tools, type in CMD, hit enter. This will launch the CMD window inside the folder of platform tools as you could see over here. Now type in ADB devices and verify that you are getting an ID, not in caps, just a second. And as you could see, we are now getting this ID. If you're not having this ID, then unplug and replug your phone from the PC. Disable and re-enable USB debugging. Tap on revoke USB debugging. Use the official cable that came with your phone and use the USB 2.0 port on the PC. So carry out the USB fixture and verify that you're having this ID. Once you're getting this ID, let's move ahead. Now you have to unlock the bootloader on your phone. For that, you have to, you could use a HyperOS exploit work around as well. For example, this is the way which I have done. This is the hyper OS exploit method. I made a, a video on that as well. So you could use this hyper exploit method and unlock the booter on your phone. Once that is done, you could see in my case, I've already unlocked the booter on my phone. Once that is done, let's move on with the next step. So now you could download the ROM zip file, which is the official lineage OS ROM from this link and also the IMG files as well. So lineage OS file, the boot file, the DTBO, the recovery, the vendor boot and the super empty ng file as well. Once you've got all the files, transfer the file inside the folder of platform tools as well. So let's do that. This will take a few seconds only. This, is, these are all the files. Copy it or paste the file over here now. And we have got all the files. Moreover, rename the ROM file to something shorter. So let's rename it to ROM and the complete name becomes ROM.zip. Once that is done, let's move ahead with the next step. So now you have to boot the phone to the fast boot mode. For that, simply type in the command of ADB reboot bootloader and hit enter your phone should now boot into the fast boot mode in a few seconds so let's wait for that to happen and once it's in the fast boot mode type in fast boot devices and verify that you are having an id as well as you could see in my case but if you're not having this id then please install the fast boot drivers onto your pc we have made a guide and a video on the same you could refer to my guide and install the fast boot drivers from here once that is done right click on the windows icon and choose device manager then expand the Android phone section and verify that the phone is being shown here. As you could see in Android, bootloader interface. So this as well as the ID next to fastboot signify that the PC is able to read the phone in fastboot mode. And we are now good to go ahead. So let's now start with the ROM flashing. First off, flash the following four files, the boot, DTB, vendor boot and the recovery files. So simply copy the command from here. Okay, before that, I will also highly recommend you to please wipe the super empty partition by the super empty file. The file is given over here. Just give me a second just give me a second i have to reload the site so you could see this is the file of super mtng file and you have to flash the file using this command if you don't flash the file then you will get the error applying update 7 so as you could see we already have the file over here the file is there in the lineage was rom itself as you could see this is the file over here only so please use the command to wipe the super partition of your phone using this command only so first off copy the command from here 
and this will wipe the super partition of your phone. Paste it here, and once that is done, you could now flash the rest of the files as well, which are the boot DTP or Wonder Boot and the recovery. First of let's flash the boot file onto your phone. Hit enter, then flash the DTP file. So give it a few more seconds, and now flash the DTP. After that, flash the Wonder Boot, and finally you have to flash the Linux OS recovery file as well. So copy paste the command over here and now you have to boot the phone to the newly flash recovery. So simply use the command fastboot reboot recovery. So type in the command hit enter. Your phone should now reboot to the Linux OS recovery and this might take a few seconds. So let's wait for that to happen. And then you could do a format data as well from the ROM itself. This is a must. So now go to factory reset, format data, factory reset, format data. The data wipe is now complete. Now go back and select apply update, apply from ADB. And now open the CMD window and use the ADB site load file name which is rom.zip. Hit enter. The flashing will now start and will take up to around four to five minutes. So let's wait for that to happen. So guys, the ROM is now flashed. If you want to flash any other zip files such as gapps, then please do so right away. Let me show you how that could be done as well. So in case of gapps, you can download the GI package from my guide as well. And these are the various GI packages. Let me show you. For instance, the core GI with the Minimal GI packages, then you have the Go GI apps, Basic GI apps, Omni, Stock, and the full GI app with all the GI packages. For now, I'm using the core GI apps. Moreover, there are quite a few devs who provide these GI packages. For example, the Light GI app, Nick GI app, Mind the Gaps, Bit GI app, and C Android also. For now, we are using the Nick GI package. So go to their official page, hit the download now button. From here, go to the release section, and from there, Android 15. The latest date over here, and then choose the one of your choice. I'm using the core G app for now, so let me show you. Once you've got the required G app, so flashing the G app package is optional. It's not compulsory. You must skip that as well. If you want to skip that and just tap on No, and then tap on Reboot System now. But if you want to flash any other G app or the Magic package, then simply do so right now. For that, type on Yes, and now in the meantime, let's select the G app package which is. Over here, and transfer the package inside the folder of platform tools. Rename it to something shorter. So let's rename it to Gaps for the ease of convenience. And hit enter. And we are now once again inside the recovery. Now select apply update, apply from ADB. Now open the CMD window. Type in the command ADB site load. Gaps dot zip. Hit enter. You will now get a prompt on your phone. This is happening because we are flashing a file which is not a part of Linux OS. So if you flash any file such as Gaps, Magis, or any other zip file. You will always get this prompt. It's all normal. Just tap on yes, and the flashing is now started. Depending on the GIA package, the flashing might take some time. I am using the core GIA with the minimal GIA package, so it will be quite fast. But if you are using the stock or the full GIA, then the flashing will take quite a lot, lot of time. And in my case, the flashing is now done. If you want to flash any other zip file, then again do a reboot to the recovery and do so the do so right away. Finally, tap on reboot system now, and the phone will now boot to the OS. The first booting up will take up some time. That's all normal, and so let's just wait for the boot logo to appear or the boot animation, which will signify that the flashing has been done successfully, and they might now appear in around 10 to 15 seconds. So let's keep a tab on that as well, and they should now be here anytime soon, and we will now get the new boot animation which came with I guess Android 14 of Linux OS. So we will be now having the new boot animation as well, and the boot logo should be there in a few more seconds, based on Linux OS Android 15 build. As you could see, so this signifies the flashing has been done, and now wait for around 10 to 15 more seconds for the ROM to boot up completely. And guys, with this, we are now inside the OS, so let's get started. As of now, I'm skipping the initial setup. If you want, you may link your Wi-Fi, then link the Google account and restore all the data. But for now, I'm skipping all of that stuff just to speed up the process of the ROM setup. Next, next, just the navigation. Next, and we are inside the OS, and I'm having a few. Pre-installed GI packages such as the Play Store, the Play Service, and the Play Service framework in the backend because I flashed the GI package. And the rest are the same as you might be aware. The Linux OS is a clean stock UI experience with no plot fair or no features as such. But that's all normal. We will go to the wallpaper and styles, and from here, change the theming engine from here. Change any color color from this or this section, or switch between the light and the dark theme from here as well. For now, let's stick with the default theme only. You may also change the icons in the status bar at the top. Let's enable a few icons. Let's say this, this, and uh, auto rotate. And you may keep a track of the same on the top right. Icons are being changed. So 
so let's go with the kai hit apply and the icons are now change apart from that we also have the font style you may change from anyone with font let's go with this one the font will be changed across the entire ui and ux of the os then you also go to the home screen then you may change the theme icons enable that as well app get size 5 cross 5 is the maximum for me best for me as well but you can do up to 6 cross 6 as well but that's somewhat lengthy and i may skip that i can shape let's go with the pebble one these are all the various icon shape that you choose from and the changes will be there across both the home screen and the app drawer let me show you this is the home screen and the app drawer both the changes you could see i can shape has been changed across both of them okay there is no lock screen clock style to change that is somewhat disappointing but that has been the case from the starting of lineage os apart from that let me see what else it has to offer so go to the display section and anything new as such this is nothing new the rotation settings auto rotate tap to sleep on status bar okay this is a nice feature double tap to wake is currently okay this is also working double tap to sleep and wake both are working along the expected lines then in the system let's see what all is there buttons invert layout edge long swipe action let's say let's say launch the camera app and you could see it's not turned on while using the app and let me show you the result as well of a random photo the camera app is also working as expected you may also use the gcam to improve the quality of the photo as well that will be much better approach and apart from that system menu power menu let me see advanced restart that is not usually there if you face any issue that's all normal for the first time you use it simply close the menu and reopen the menu as well again go to settings system and buttons power menu there okay advanced restart is there that's quite great to see and we have the option to reboot to the recovery the fast boot d and the fast boot mode at the system as well so that's all that is required make device answer call everything are the same partial screenshot gestures quickly open cam camera navigation mode just the navigation so these are the same that you get across all the aosp roms and apart from that you may either update the phone from the from this section the system section install the ota from here or you may also simply do the adb side of the rom zip file from here from the recovery as well but for now i will advise you to please use the ota method because that's much easier to do so and you may also lock your apps from the privacy screen as well from the private the private space from here first set a screen lock of your choice let's say a pattern of three cross three next and next confirm and then you may add the required private space apps over here you may choose a lock screen for the private space as well choose the same lock or the new lock i'm using the same lock screen pattern though it's not recommended but for the ease of convenience i'm doing so right now you may change a different lock pattern and not just simply tap on the lock icon on the app drawer and you may add your apps from here you may even hide the private space from the app drawer by using this option got it and now hide it from here it's now hidden you may search from here or open it from the settings menu to get back the private space and apart from that let's have a look at the wallpaper style which you have done already home settings so you may hide the app from here as well use theme icon in the app drawer that is quite a handy feature you could see we now have the theme icon over here as well and that's just about it so guys on that note we round to this video if you have any query with regard to any of the steps do let me know in the comment section and thanks a lot for watching